uh, first of all, I would like to thank uh, uh, Professor KTV for giving me this opportunity to give this um, seminar. So um, when which I'm going to talk about uh, holographic cosmology, no minimal hits uh, inflation model. So let's get started by the outline. Uh, uh, first, I will uh, start by giving you some bio about myself. Um, then since uh, the audience, most of you don't have enough uh, pre-knowledge, I will start by uh, the basics, trying to capture really the very big principles, not going too much into the details, I wish. So I will start my basics by cosmological standard model, then cosmological perturbations and modified gravity. Uh, in the second part, um, I will uh, talk about my contribution uh, to the research uh, in the non-minimal coupling and holographic cosmology for the Higgs inflation model. And finally, I will give you uh, some conclusions. So currently, I'm an associated member to the Laboratory of uh, Physics of Matter and Radiation. Uh, this laboratory um, is composed uh, from uh, four uh, research teams. The, the first team is theoretical physics, plasma physics and applications, a member of this team. And the second team is quantum matter, spectroscopy and their applications. The third team is high energy physics, nuclear and uh, medical physics. And finally, we have the team of physics of structured materials, radiation and applications. Um, I would like to give you some members related to the work uh, we, we do in our laboratory. So our laboratory is composed of uh, 15 professors. We have 30 uh, between uh, PhD and PhD students. Uh, and our laboratory has two collaborations, one with ATLAS and second with KM3Net. Uh, in 2020, we published uh, 94 articles. Every year, uh, our laboratory organizes a scientific day. In this event, each member represents his work during the year. So uh, you can see here the picture. This picture is taken after the event, um, I think maybe in 2018 or 2019 event. It shows some laboratory members. So here I am. Uh, a few months <coughs> back, I got my PhD degree. Uh, this was exactly in December 2020. Uh, I got my PhD from Mohammed I University of Morocco under the supervision of Professor Tofiq Wadi and co-supervision of Professor uh, Mariam Bohmadi Lopez uh, from University of the Basque Country Bilbao in Spain. The title is Infl Holographic Inflation of Induced Gravity Models uh, theoretical aspects and observational constraints. So in this thesis, we studied different aspects uh, on inflationary scenarios in holographic cosmology, where the general framework was based on high dimensional space time, but restricted to 5D. And then we used the holographic vision of the universe to evaluate the 4D description of the universe. So as a result, we showed that the description of cosmological inflation in the context of holographic cosmology gives a great compatibility with, observation, uh, with observational data. Uh, we considered different situations for different types of fields, such as a normal scalar field, tachyonic field, and Higgs field. And today, I will focus only on the last work uh, of the Higgs inflation. So in, in 2016, I was lucky to be one of the four students selected from Morocco to attend the African School of Physics in Rwanda. It was a really a great experience for me to be part of this summer school where we meet students from many African countries, students who work on different topics. On the other hand, on the other side, we, we were lucky to learn a lot from uh, the lecturers who shared their knowledge and professional experience in different fields. Um, here it comes to my mind the awesome lecture of Neil Torok about general relativity, which was really amazing. So here is the, the first picture, I think, we, we took at the school, and yeah, here, here I am. Uh, I have uh, 
participated also to many meetings and conferences, uh, I list here some. And um, yes, the last one was just uh, last week in the Iberian Cosmological Meeting by uh, University of Coimbra in Portugal. So uh, before talking about uh, different points in, in generalities, let me give you uh, the key points that we will discuss in more uh, detail in the following slides. So my starting point is the cosmic microwave background, CMB. This radiation produced um, 380,000 uh, 380, years uh, after the Big Bang. Um, this number represents something like uh, 10 to the minus five, the age of the universe. So the CMB is the oldest picture of the universe we have. It was discovered by chance uh, in, uh, in, in 1964 by Penzias and Wilson. And uh, see, to date, CMB mm -hmm. is, the main is the main observable uh, with which uh, we, call, uh, we test our theories. Uh, the first... Uh, the first uh, precise measurement of the CMB uh, made by the satellite uh, by the satellite Kobe Cosmic Background Explorer put in place by uh, NASA in 1989. The received data showed that the CMB closely matches uh, that expected from a black body with a temperature of 2.73 Kelvin which is exactly the result expected if the CMB was indeed redshifted radiation emitted by a hot gas that filled all of uh, space shortly after the universe began. Then the most uh, detailed uh, measurements of the CMB have been obtained um, more recently by WMAP in 2003, while the Planck satellite extended the WB map uh, measurements uh, to much higher spatial resolution and lower noise. So I will uh, talk later about the importance of these radiations uh, in cosmology. Now, in order to describe our universe, we have what we call standard cosmological model. And in fact, it's mostly realized on scenarios. It's not really theory. It's a scenario, it is the Big Bang scenario, which, give, uh, which gives the frame of the evolution of all uh, structures. So the standard cosmological model is based on general relativity of Einstein, which is um, one of the towering achievements of the, the, the 20th century uh, physics. So according to um, the cosmological standard model, structures are uh, the result of the gravitational collapse of primordial seeds generated in a phase of accelerated expansion, uh, which is inflation. Uh, inflation, uh, which claims uh, to make uh, the initial conditions of the standard Big Bang. The theoretical um, frame of inflation is the theory of cosmological perturbation in which we consider the universe as a background uh, with a small perturbation. Now we move to uh, the general framework of our study, which is holography related to the hologram, maybe most known between us. So hologram is a um, 3D image formed by 2D images. We believe that soon televisions with hologram technology may enable us to watch in 3D. Now let's come back to cosmology. So the holographic principle states that all information about matter and energy contained in a volume is actually encoded on its surface. Uh, and the anti-distributor conform of field theoretic correspondence is based on this uh, holographic principle. It's a gauge gravity duality, which connects uh, gauge theory without gravity, which means conform of field theory to a theory of gravity living, living in a higher dimension with an anti dissitor space. So all these notions um, are the key words of this presentation. Now let's move to details. So here we have uh, in this slide, the cosmological standard model. The cosmological standard model um, is based on the so-called cosmological principle, which states that uh, 
when observed sufficiently uh, on sufficiently large scale, the properties of the universe uh, are the same uh, for all observers. This means that the view uh, of an observer doesn't depend uh, neither on the direction, and this is what we call um, isotropic, nor uh, on the location, uh, and this is uh, the homogeneity. So here, in this picture here, we have um, a demonstration of a great isotropic of the universe, thanks to the observation of the CMB. Uh, and here in the left, we have the, in the right, we have a demonstration of the homogeneity of the universe by observation of a large number of galaxies. I think uh, we all uh, we are all uh, wondering how old is the universe. To answer this question, we can do by two ways. Uh, so the first way is by looking for the oldest stars, and the second way is by measuring the rate of expansion of the universe and extrapolating back to the Big Bang. Here, of course, we consider the second way, which is possible by the measure of the Hubble constant. So to understand what does it mean, um, this parameter, we go back into history. When Edwin Hubble discovered a um, linear correlation uh, between distance and velocity measurements of galaxies, which is given mathematically by, by this relationship, here h is the Hubble parameter. And we have here the original Hubble diagram. The best, um, uh, the best today estimates is about uh, 67.4, which means that the universe is between uh, 11 uh, to uh, 14 billion years. So um, we have seen uh, before in the, in the introduction that the study of the dynamics of um, the, the cosmological standard model may may be done uh, by the Einstein general relativity, which is a metric uh, theory of gravitation. So general relativity describes the relation between, uh, between geometry and the energy momentum contained on, uh, in that uh, space-time. So mathematically, it is given by the, ex the equation number one here. Here we have a Jimmy Nu, which is the Einstein tensor, and here Tim Yu Nu is the energy momentum tensor. Lambda here is the cosmological constant. The 4D action described the interaction between the curvature of space-time and the stress energy tensor of matter is given by this uh, expression here, where here R is the curvature, is the Ricci scalar, and here we have the matter. We can solve the, the Einstein equations uh, in general, metric for homogeneous um, and uh, isotropic spacetime, which is the well known Friedman Lemaitre Robertson Walker metric, given by this expression here. Here, uh, T is the, is the time, and this is the special part of the metric. So, for this metric, we can derive from the Einstein equations three important equations. The first one, is the Friedman equation from the, the, to, uh, the time time component of the Einstein equation. Here, mu and the mu takes uh, four values zero for time and three values for space. So, here we have the H, the Hubble parameter. Here is the energy density. Here, K is the curvature. And finally, we have here lambda, which is the cosmological constant. This equation. Uh, Friedman equation yield the time evolution and geometry of the universe as a function of uh, the energy density. And the second equation is obtained from the space space component of the Einstein uh, equation. It relates the acceleration here, it relates uh, the acceleration with the, the energy density and pressure. The third uh, equation is the continuity equation, which is due to the fact that the Einstein tensor is covariantly conserved here, which means, uh, which implies that uh, the conservation of the energy momentum tensor. So up to now, we have seen the Big Bang cosmological model as the best theory we have to explain the birth and the existence of the universe. But 
while the successful description of the universe, it is not perfect. So there remain 3K problems known as the hot Big Bang problems, uh, the horizon, the flatness, and the monopole problems. So a simple and elegant solution to the three problems is provided by introducing a period in the evolution of the early universe just here, when the universe underwent an extremely rapid exponential expansion. This uh, inflation uh, has been introduced by Alan Guth. So in, the, in this plot here, we have a radius in function of a time. So precisely what we mean by inflation is an exponential expansion uh, by at least a factor of uh, this uh, factor is at least 10 to the, uh, 10 to the 26, which took um, less than 10 to the minus 33 seconds. So from the acceleration equation, we have this condition, which implies that the pressure should be necessarily be uh, negative. So here we need uh, to find the physical system able uh, to produce such a negative pressure. As inflation happened at early times, which means at very high energies, matter is described uh, using Fell theory. So for homogeneous and isotropic universe, we have spin zero particles, which means scalar field. We call here inflaton. So during um, during inflation, you can see in this um, plot, during the inflationary era, the scalar field changed slowly, very slowly. So where the potential is sufficiently flat, we call uh, this um, era slow roll, which means the limit in which the potential energy dominates over the kinetic uh, term. And when the field varies, inflation ends and uh, the reheating uh, period starts. Inflation um, does not answer the Big Bang problem, but also it could explain the large scale structure formation. So according to inflation, fluctuations in the intensity of the radiation are the seeds of the cosmic structure that have been amplified uh, to become stars and galaxies, etc. So we have um, different uh, types of fluctuations, the scalar field fluctuations, uh, we calculate uh, them by scalar perturbations, and we have the gravitational field fluctuations by tensor perturbations, which means gravitational waves. In this picture, we have here the, the ratio between tensor to scalar uh, perturbations uh, versus the spectral index. What we do in our studies is that we calculate these parameters and then compare uh, compare them with constraints um, imposed by, uh, by observations. So for example, here we have um, the 2018 Planck data, and here uh, we have the one sigma, two sigma confidence level. Then we can see if our model is in, in the confidence uh, level or is rejected by observations. So for example, here we have different uh, type of potential, different uh, inflation, and then we see if we are in agreement or not with observations. So in the previous uh, slides, the description of the universe was taken as homogeneous and isotropic, which means by the friedman lemaitre robertson walker metric. And then here we have the Einstein tensor, the energy momentum tensor. Uh, which is an idealization. Here, the evolution of fluctuation will be studied uh, within linear perturbation theory, where the idea is to describe the physical universe as a friedman uh, lemaitre robertson walker universe, in addition to small perturbations. Um, as you can see here, phi and psi are scalar perturbations. So using um, the, the, this equation, perturbed Einstein equation, we can find the individual uh, components of, 
of the of this equation uh, here it is good to notice that uh, one property of the energy momentum tensor for a scalar field that is a special part is diagonal which means it has no as it uh, an isotropic stress thus we have the um, the same uh, scalar perturbation which means psi is equal to phi hence the remaining einstein equations are a couple uh, differential equations for only two gauge variables um, phi and delta phi in this uh, slide we compute the power spectrum of curvature perturbations by solving the mohan of sasaki equations so finally we get the parameter we need into um, in order to compare with observations here the curvature perturbations perturbation and the scalar spectral index now we move to tensor perturbations. So the tensor perturbations are given by the perturbations of um, space time. Uh, here we have the perturbation, H is the perturbation. Uh, then we have the Einstein, uh, the perturbed Einstein equations, and uh, we uh, get finally the tensor power spectrum and the tensor spectral index. Um, this parameter are uh, very important to discriminate between the large uh, number of inflationary models by comparing um, this theoretical uh, result we get uh, with observations. So, um, here I'm going to talk about uh, modified gravity. So given that Einstein's uh, general relativity breaks down at high energies and leave place for quantum gravity theory, which describes physics so successfully. Um, yes, at present, um, there is yet no generally accepted quantum gravity theory, but the most uh, prominent candidates are the M theory. But first, why to consider extra dimensions? So the concept of uh, possible existence of new special dimensions beyond the four we, we see have been introduced uh, for about a hundred of years already in order to unify the electromagnetism with Einstein's general uh, relativity. So Kaluza and Klein around 1921 uh, proposed a theory with a compact fifth uh, dimension. So um, you can see in this uh, picture we can um, uh, uh, we have that um, we can imagine that space with extra dimension uh, is um, it can be seen as a small circle in in each um, in each uh, in every point of 3D space. So this is the Kaluza Klein theory, uh, which is viewed as an interesting scientific discovery, even uh, if. It turns out to that the Kaluza Klein theory may be flawed, for example, since it leads to a calculated mass of the electron in the orders of magnitude greater than the measured one. But still, uh, higher dimensions and compactification turned out to, to be seeds of new theories. So, indeed, extra dimensions are a known fundamental ingredient. Uh, for uh, string theory, where all versions are uh, formulated in space uh, time of more than uh, 4D, uh, actually 11 if there is in theory. In theory, which is um, the most uh, prominent candidate, candidate uh, for a quantum gravity theory. And then uh, after this, it was discovered that certain string theory background could admit a domain wall like solutions uh, called brains. Uh, brain, which are a way uh, to uh, best uh, to test uh, some uh, predictions and corrections of general relati relativity implied by M theory. So here we will constrain uh, just on the Randall syndrome brain world model. So we focus in this slide on the Randall syndrome 2 model. Um, as you can see here in this figure, we have um, all standard uh, particles uh, or standard model particles are confined to three, um, three brain, which is embedded 
in a higher dimension space time called the bulk. Um, where only uh, gravity um, can propagate in extra dimensions. So the action described this uh, model is given by this expression. Here is the bulk part in which we have curvature and in the brain we have the matter Lagrangian. Now um, we have here the Einstein equations. We can see that we have two deviations from the general re relativity. Um, by the appearance of this quadratic term in the energy momentum tensor and this term, which is the projection of the bulk while tensor. Um, and now in order to find the solution uh, of Einstein's equation, we have the metric. Uh, here is the metric. So our brain is located at y equal to zero. Here we find the Friedman equation described the randall syndrome model. And uh, we have, we can see that we have a significant uh, deviation from the standard cosmology that the, um, by the appearance of two terms, namely the dark radiation, this term, uh, derived from the influence of the bulk gravity. And we have also here a quadratic um, term of the energy density. We note that uh, within low energy, we get a standard result or general relativity, while the modification will dominate at high energies. In this slide, we consider the holographic cosmology based on the interdisciplinary conformal field theory correspondence, which is um, uh, class, which means that um, the classical. Uh, dynamics of the higher dimensions gravitational field are considered as um, to be equivalent to the quantum dynamics of the conformal field theory on its boundary. So in other words, uh, the ADACFT is one-to-one -one correspondence between the bulk uh, fields and operator, operators of the boundary gauge theory. So here is the Einstein equations for the holographic cosmology and the deviation from uh, the Einstein general relativity is the appearance of this energy momentum tensor of the conformal field theory. And for the Friedman equation, we have head expression. We also have uh, two deviation, uh, the radiation, the dark radiation term, and also we have this H4 uh, um, term. Now, uh, I will move uh, to the to our contribution to research. So we have um, studied during this thesis inflationary um, parameters in the context of an holographic cosmology with an induced gravity correction. In, in this work, we uh, took two situations where a universe is firstly filled with a scalar field and secondly with a tachyon field, and then we uh, did a comparison between theoretical model parameters and Planck observational data. In this uh, regard, the comparison indicates that the predicted parameters are consistent with observational data. We have noticed a better agreement to the observation at 95% uh, confidence level for the tachyon field than the scalar field. Uh, on the other hand, it can be noted um, also that the presence of the induced gravity correction allows to expand the range of the conformal anomaly coefficient compared to the range founded in literature. The second work we, we did is the inflationary model of non-minimal decoupled to gravity within holographic cosmology. So we considered a non-minimal couplet scalar field with scalar um, curvature, and then we uh, calculated the, the scalar perturbations from a holographic point of view, of view in order to find any deviation with respect to general relativity. Uh, this work was uh, purely uh, theoretical. The third uh, work is um, an application of the second. We, in which we considered um, Higgs inflationary model, uh, always in the context of holographic cosmology. 
So uh, we consider that the universe is filled with a Higgs field, no minimally coupled to gravity, and then we did a comparison between theoretical model parameters um, and observational data. So um, uh, today I'm going uh, to talk um, in more details about uh, about uh, this this work, and here you can find uh, more details of uh, of works. So um, as we said before, to make the inflationary era possible, the way is by including scalar field. This hypothetical particle may appear in different extensions of standard models, a model of elementary particles. However, the only scalar field that has been detected so far is the Higgs boson, whose existence was confirmed at the Large Hadron Collider in 2013. But the major problem with Higgs inflation is that the energy scale of the Higgs field is too small to generate enough efforts required to solve the Big Bang problems. Uh, however, when postulating a non-minimal coupling uh, term between the Higgs and the Ricci scalar, we ensure an excellent agreement with observation. So that's why we uh, have here um, added this correction of the non-minimal coupling. So here we have our background model. So here is a um, generalized Randall Sandra model with a correction of non-minimal uh, coupling term, which is this term, which is a function of scalar field phi here. And alpha zero is the non-minimal uh, coupled constant. So within the holographic scope, we, uh, we could uh, find the the Friedman equation, which is given by this expression here. Here C is the conformal anomaly coefficient that characterizes the, the effect of the holographic cosmology. And you have also kappa effective and rho, which are given by um, this, uh, these terms. And here is uh, the effect of non-minimal coupling. We have also here the scalar field equation here dots are derivative with respect to time and comma phi here is derivative with respect to scalar field. Now we move to uh, perturbations. So for the more perturbed metric, we have scalar perturbations of Friedman, Lemaitre, Robertson, Valka background in the conformal Newtonian. Here are the, the scalar perturbation. So for the perturbed Einstein equations, we get this equation. Here, the first term is the perturbed image, is the perturbed Einstein tensor, which is given by this expression. Then we have here the perturbation of the energy momentum tensor, the perturbation of the quadratic term, and finally the perturbation of the projected wire tensor. Here, um, I will uh, skip over a lot of details in order to uh, just give you the results, the main points. So for the perturbative parameters, we found scalar perturbations, uh, which we write as um, a standard expression time a correction term. And this correction term depend on the non-minimal decoupled and it depend also on the conformal um, anomaly coefficient, which means it depends on the, uh, the holographic cosmology effect. Here, uh, the correction terms uh, are written in function of this U parameter, which is V over V max. Here, this U parameter is very important parameter in the next slide, uh, because um, the effect of what we add, which means of the holograph of both holographic cosmology and non-minimal couplet, is um, uh, we can see the effect through this parameter U. Uh, for the spectral index of the power spectrum, we get this expression, uh, which, uh, which is in function of the slow roll parameters, epsilon and eta, and we write them also as um, standard expressions time, uh, times uh, correction term. Here we have, in addition to this known uh, slow, roll uh, slow roll parameters, we have two more. Uh, parameters related directly to the effect of no minimal coupling and uh, the holographic cosmology. 
So for the observational constraints, um, we have here um, consider aquatic Higgs-like potential, which is given by this form. Here, lambda is the Higgs self-coupling. Uh, and for the large um, values of the field, which is a good approximation uh, to study inflation, we have this condition. And then using the definition of U, we find the, an a lower bound for the non-minimal coupling constant, which is um, two times 10 to three for uh, C equal to four times 10 to seven and lambda equal to 0 0.13. Of course, this lambda is um, fixed by the uh, particle physics. In this plot here, we, um, we have here the, the parameter U in function of the of C and phi for different values of the non-minimal coupling. And here we have the U in function of uh, the non-minimal coupling uh, constant and the phi for different values of the holographic effect. So what we are looking here, uh, we are looking for the range for which uh, this parameter U still different from zero, which means the effect of both uh, holographic cosmology and non-minimal coupling um, can appear, but it's still small. That's why we have here 10 to um, nine times U. So we can see that for large field, we have this U, we have the effect uh, of both uh, corrections, which means that we are in agreement with what, with, uh, what we said before. Now for the, um, the number uh, of E folds, so first, what is uh, efolding number in science? In general, efolding is the time interval in which an exponentially growing quantity increases by a factor of e. It's the base e, analog of doubling uh, time. Uh, in cosmology and precisely in inflation, the number of efolds, which is very important uh, parameter, is um, uh, means how much the universe um, expanded or increases by the factor of E. So for um, uh, successful inflation, uh, this number of E folds uh, should be in the range of 50 and 70. So um, in the large field limit, we calculated this number of E folds. And then here we plotted the number of E folds um, in function of the, of the scalar field uh, for different values of uh, alpha zero at the top and for different values of C at the bottom. So here we can see that our results that we can find a range in, in, of, for our parameters in which uh, we are in the appropriate range of N, which is from 50 to 70. Um, now to further check the viability of the model, we have to consider the tensor perturbations. But first we um, would plot here the non-minimal decoupling function uh, in function of the number of E folds in the, uh, the range 50, 70. So we can see that this function is almost constant, which means uh, instead of calculating the tensor uh, perturbation, we will um, use those of, um, um, of a constant and use the gravity correction uh, given by this expression here. So finally, we are able to calculate the famous tensor to scalar ratio and then to compare with observations. So here are the results of comparison. We have here the um, scalar spectral index. And, uh, in addition to the one um, sigma bound uh, from the Planck data here. So we can see that um, our results are um, in agreement with observation. Here we have the tensor to scalar ratio uh, in function of the number of E folds. And we have also here a subplot in which we zone the, the wanted range. Um, here the horizontal red line indicates um, the upper bound uh, for the tensor to scalar ratio imposed by, uh, by Planck. So we conclude that um, R um, here lies uh, within the bound imposed by Planck, but in an extremely small uh, range, 
of n, which is around 50, 58.4048. Now, finally, we have here the tensor to scalar ratio against the spectral index together with a confidence level counters using Planck alone in the gray color and Planck in combination with um, PK14 in red color. Here in blue and uh, green are our, our um, theoretical predictions. So we can, um, we can see that our predictions uh, here lies inside the 95% confidence level of the Planck data for the selected values. So that's all. Uh, now uh, let me recapitulate. So um, we have studied an inflationary scenario where the field is non-minimally coupled with gravity in the framework of uh, holographic cosmology from a background and perturbative analysis. So for the Higgs field, no minimally coupled to reach a scalar, we, um, we calculated the background and perturbative parameters characterizing the inflationary era. And we find that they are related to the standard one through correction terms uh, in a large field limit for those um, uh, selected values of our parameters we, um, we found that the model lies extremely well with observations made by Planck. However, as soon as we move from uh, this value of the number of efforts, the model is ruled out by current data. So that's all. Thank you for your attention. Yeah, hi, Atifa. Thanks. Uh, thank you uh, uh, very much for this work. It's quite impressive. Um, oh, thank you. Really congratulations uh, again for the for your PhD, and uh, I really wish you success in uh, in your future work. Uh, I would like to see. Uh, I really, I really look forward to see you successful. This is really, really great. Oh, thank um, you, thank you very much. Yeah. So, um, before we go to question and answer, I have forgotten something at the beginning. Um, um, so I would like Munia to share a couple of slides of announcements before people disappear, and then we'll come back and uh, we'll discuss, uh, uh, we'll have answers, answers uh, uh, questions for Farida. So start thinking about your questions and your comment for, for Atifa, and then we will uh, we'll discuss in a moment. So Atifa, could you stop sharing and then we'll let Munia share a couple of slides of announcements? Yes, yes, yes. Munia, please go ahead and share. Okay. Hello, it's fine? Yes. Okay. So hello everyone. Um, uh, I'm very excited to be part of this uh, amazing initiative. Uh, thank you for uh, including me here. So uh, as a brief introduction, I'm uh, Munia. I'm uh, from Morocco. Uh, I got my uh, PhD in physics and nuclear instrumentation from Muhammad Five University, and I'm uh, ESP 2016 alumna. So uh, we decided to build an uh, Instagram and a Twitter uh, community dedicated to ESP alumni uh, students. So the goal of this, uh, this community is to inspire and uh, influence younger African students to study physics and related science. Uh, and also to, to take this as a scientific uh, career. Uh, so the idea uh, is to send us uh, your uh, short bio uh, with a few pictures uh, during your uh, scientific research. Uh, I would love also to, to see uh, one, uh, at least one of them uh, from uh, taken during uh, ASP school. 
So uh, it's gonna be fantastic if you can uh, participate and uh, join us in this community. So it, I mean, in our community, because it's due to our school of physics. So uh, the, here we will uh, answer the same question as the uh, uh, ESP online uh, uh, lectures. So uh, where we are uh, now and what happened to us uh, after we uh, uh, ESP. Uh, just uh, for uh, for uh, for uh, your bio, uh, we don't want uh, something like your CV, uh, something more uh, more professional. It's gonna be like a, a short story. So uh, if uh, retrace your uh, uh, retrace uh, a bit your education uh, uh, and uh, until uh, what uh, are you doing now? Uh, passing by uh, the, the African School of uh, Physics. Uh, of course, uh, people will be interested in your uh, academic uh, uh, career, uh, and uh, this is uh, this is uh, it, it. It should be uh, centered on the physics, uh, but uh, but uh, with the uh, uh, historical native. Uh, uh, of your uh, your personal development as a physicist. So uh, uh, just uh, if you are able to 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 translate your bio in your native uh, language, like uh, for example for me uh, Arabic, uh, it's gonna be awesome. And uh, also for uh, Atifa and Hasna, uh, it's going to be, uh, for example, in English and uh, Tamazir or uh, Berber language. Uh, uh, I think so. So, uh, so uh, also uh, I want to add something. For I want to add something for the Instagram and the Twitter uh, world, world limit. Uh, so uh, your bio. Uh, should be not uh, more than 300 words. So if you're gonna uh, write it in uh, put uh, a language, I mean uh, in uh, English and your native uh, uh, language, you, you must divide it by uh, uh, two. So it's gonna be 150 for your English bio and 150 for your native bio. So our uh, community uh, on Instagram and uh, on Twitter, we first we we gonna start it by uh, by uh, African School of Physics alumni. So uh, African School of Physics community, sorry. So uh, I'm already started with uh, Doctor Kitivi. Uh, so if you want to learn more about uh, his uh, story, uh, please go and visit uh, our community uh, on Instagram and uh, on uh, Twitter. Uh, also, I want to add something. Uh, uh, yeah. Also, uh, if you you can send us like uh, an advice or uh, or uh, a quota that you stack uh, with you, it's gonna be uh, awesome. Uh, so yeah, I think that's it. All right. Thank uh, thank you, Monia. So, uh, uh, sorry, uh, uh, Mister, I forgot something. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. So uh, we gonna we gonna. I, I I'm thinking to 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 post three three alumni uh, three story of the alumni students uh, per week, uh, and after uh, after uh, we posted uh, like for example ten alumni students, uh, I'm gonna I will be hosting uh, like. Uh, 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 ask uh, ask uh, ESP alumni uh, anything. So uh, we will invite one of uh, this uh, ten alumni uh, students posted, and uh, we will uh, discuss uh, about uh, anything related to the physics, uh, how to uh, choose your advisor, uh, how to uh, develop your uh, scientific research. Uh, and this is will be on Instagram live. And before it, I will uh, I will make like a, a, a question story to ask people about uh, some questions, and we will choose uh, one uh, a few of them, and uh, we will uh, respond to it. 
So uh, if you have uh, any questions or comments, uh, just uh, feel free to uh, ask me now or uh, reach out to me via, uh, via our uh, uh, ESP alumni community uh, email. So I'm looking forward to getting to know you all. Thank you. Uh, th thanks, Munia. So we really like the young folks, uh, you guys, uh, you know, next generation, we would like really you, you guys to get mobilized. So please participate in this forum, make it dynamic, share your professional journey, what is happening, you know, and your research, um, photograph of, uh, of, of your research that you want to share. Uh, make make this forum lively and it needs to grow into um, a well-structured forum of uh, young African physicists. That's where we are going. Okay, so so I really encourage you to, to, to participate and to make this forum active. Yeah, that's the way that you guys also can, can talk to us, us senior physicists in terms of how do you think we can help you better you know what are your interests what are your worries and 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 what are your struggles what are your successes and so forth professionally so we want it to be a professional forum by using the social media okay so really get involved and and be active over there in terms of uh, sharing uh, the uh, information. So, uh, Ulrich. Yes, yeah, sorry. Yeah, I'm a bit irrational. I only have to leave because I, for another meet for my second, my second vaccination. So, uh, I just said a short question to the seminar, which was very nice, interesting, lots of formulas. Um, you talked, so I just have one short question uh, in the time. Um, you talked about this Higgs field you introduced, which uh, what was called NMC, non, uh, non standard modified coupling, or so. What, is in, what are the consequences of such a modification, in fact, to our particle physics sector? What would be the, I mean, the field, Higgs field you assume? What would that mean? Uh, there's probably additional Higgs's uh, to be expected. Could you comment on that? Um, yes, of course. So we um, added a, a coupling, no minimal coupling uh, constant. Uh, first, uh, the motivation arises at the quantum level when quantum corrections uh, to the scalar field theory are considered. So what we mean by minimal coupling is um, something like minimal things that is added in order to conserve the gauge invariant. And for the non-minimal, it conserves the, the covariant, but also we add something um, more to answer uh, some questions in theory, but it still uh, covariant. So here we added a non-minimal coupling um, in order to um, uh, to eliminate the problem, the problem with Higgs inflation. Um, I'm not specialized on um, particle physics, but what we have in cosmology with problem with Higgs um, inflation is uh, the number, the number of E fold. Um, if we don't add this non-minimal coupling, we get that, that number um, small, uh, very small. So it is not um, uh, enough uh, to, uh, to solve the, the big bang problems, which means, uh, uh, this um, number uh, should be in, uh, in a range of 1570. Uh, but uh, when postulating a non minimal coupling and also a large non minimal coupling uh, between the Higgs and the Ricci scalar, uh, we ensure um, this agreement with observations. So that's what I know about um, adding this um, scuffling. But is it still the, it's not, is it still the standard Higgs field or? I mean, yes, it's, still it's the Higgs nice field. It's the Higgs field. It's still the standard model Higgs field. 
Yeah. Und als es, als es bin, ähm, wie als es bin, Doublet, it's still the same. It's just yes, the same. It's, yes, it's the same. We just add a, a coupling just, which we don't see in, we wouldn't see it in particle physics. Ah, okay. Yeah. It's just a correction that we add in order to avoid uh, such problem. But we, in experimentally in particle physics would yeah. we see, would we see it such a this modification? Yes, it exists in particle physics. No, I mean yeah. the Higgs exists, but the coupling between the Higgs field and uh, the new field is that what is what, what how did you call it, Farida? Uh, uh, no, no minimal coupling. Yeah, no, the coupling between the Higgs yeah. and what? And the rich scalar and curvature. Yeah. Okay. So is I guess the question is, is there a way for us to test it experimentally in particle physics? Okay. Uh, I don't have too much uh, knowledge about this. Let's uh, put it another way. <clears throat> if you go to your slide, uh, maybe 28 or... Um, I have to share my Yeah, screen. please go, do it. Please share your screen. Okay, okay thank you. Okay. I think Ulrich is worried about uh, when you consider that the, the quartic coupling, lambda phi to the, to the fourth. I don't remember which slide. Here? Yeah, there, yeah. So this yeah. is just the, the standard model field, Higgs mm -hmm. field. So yeah. do you consider only this kind of model or you, what, what yes. if you modify this potential, for example, you can, there is a lot of potential uh, that you can consider with two doublet or uh, you oh. can add the singlet and so on. Oh, okay. Uh, I don't have uh, too much idea, but what we did is just we work with this uh, with this uh, known uh, quartic Higgs potential. So Farida, so let's yeah. say for example we discover another Higgs. If we discover another Higgs boson, uh, <laughs> yeah. let's say a neutral Higgs. Yeah. So now we yeah. know for sure that maybe we have two. Uh, that could be up, even up to five charge Higgs. Let's say we have something like that. What? what how do you think? Um, your studies here will be modified in the presence of uh, uh, additional Higgs fields? I think if we have um, too much, um, uh, too much uh, from our observations, we can do, uh, do better. We can uh, test better our theories and or uh, maybe our models. Mm -hmm. So this uh, will open really a great uh, a window to uh, test uh, test our models and why not to find the theory which can find all this. Okay. Yeah. Other questions, uh, other comments for Farida? Uh, I'm sorry, I kept calling you Farida. <laughs> with no problem. Your, 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 your sister. I mean, yeah. <laughs> but she's also doing more or less the same uh, research, right? Yes, yes, she is also okay. working on cosmology. Yeah, yeah, Atifa, yeah. sorry about that. What no a question problem. for Atifa. So yeah. uh, in this slide, I saw that you are putting lambda equal 0.13, which is, uh, I think mm -hmm. it's the standard model. Yes. Th this is related to the Higgs uh, 125 stuff. Mm -hmm. Yes, this related to the mass of 100, I think 126 uh, or something okay. like this. Yeah. Okay, but there is, if you go beyond standard model, so this uh, uh, trilinear coupling and quartic coupling, they will receive uh, a large mm -hmm. radiative correction, which could change mm -hmm. uh, dramatically the value of this lambda. Mm -hmm. But uh, from uh, 125x, so it's, uh, lambda is this value. So if you consider mm -hmm. only standard model, but if you go beyond standard model, maybe mm -hmm. different. Mm -hmm. Uh, thank you for your uh, nice uh, presentation. I, just for your uh, information, you. so please correct. Uh, the Higgs was discovered July 2012, not 13. Oh, okay. Sorry for the mistake. Um, Atifa, could you go to the last page, uh, the, your conclusion page? I have a question there. 
Yes. Hey. Yeah. So you said that when you move from n of equal to fifty-eight, uh, then mm. then the model uh, the model is not viable. Does that rule? Does that mean that the model is too fine-tuned? Um, what what are your thoughts about about that? Um, um, yes, we get this result, and um, up to now we we are um, oh, we still uh, looking for the, the reason why we had this fine tuning, why we have um, this uh, uh, this uh, value, this uh, the R, why it's very sensitive to the value of n. Mm -hmm. So up to now we we are uh, testing something to to answer this question, but we, it's still uh, an open question for us also. Okay. Yeah. Um, other questions? Yes. Or comments? Is the n value? Uh, this is Herman White in Fermi Lab. Is the n value um, randomly? It's, it's not randomly chosen, but it's it's a limit. And how, how do you determine 50 as opposed to something that is larger than that? Um, sorry, I didn't hear you. I, I don't know if my connection or... I, I didn't I was hear the question. The, yes? the large field limit for the, for the Higgs. Ah, okay. At 58 as opposed to some other number. Uh, we consider the why uh, large values of the fields uh, this is the question oh how why why 58 or how did you get 58 why not the different number Th that sounds like a limit you were putting there and i just wanted to understand it a little better um in inflation uh, in inflationary era uh, we have a large values of the field this approximation is really a good approximation and for the uh, for the number of uh, efaults, it's um, it's by observations. It's fixed to be in this uh, this range of fifty seventy. Ah, I see. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. So, Farida, could you uh, Atifa, could you move <laughs> back a little bit? Okay. You have you have you have to tell Farida that I kept <laughs> calling her name in your in your talk. <laughs> no problem. Yeah, just go, go ahead. Yeah, uh, good. But I don't remember the, the slide number, but uh, there is mm -hmm. one where you. Uh, uh, um, yeah, yeah, no, it's in your contribution. Contribution, uh, okay. I think uh, where you show the one sigma Planck data versus uh, your oh. model. Yeah. Here? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So could you explain this picture a little bit? Because you said that there is an agreement between the model and the data. Yes. Yeah. Could you explain yeah. that a bit more? Yes, yes, of course. So what we do, um, we calculate uh, such parameters like this scalar spectral index, which means by scalar perturbations. So we get this parameter, which is this NR, and then we uh, would plot here um, this parameter against the number of efaults. From observations, we have this one sigma from the Planck data. So if we have... Um, our uh, predictions uh, in this range, this means that uh, we are in agreement with observations. So we look for each values so we are in agreement, which means uh, for each values of alpha zero of our parameters of C of alpha zero. Uh, and then we choose those values to, um, to plot the, the finally the, the, the ratio between the tensor and scalar perturbations in order to um, to see if we are in agreement or, or not with uh, with this um, with this counter uh, counter uh, counters from observations. Okay, very good. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, any other question for Atifa? All right. Before everybody goes, um, I would like to take it a, a, a screenshot. Um, last week I forgot to, to do it. Um, so let's see those. All right, so anybody who wants to uh, turn on their videos, please do that.
so that uh, we can uh, we can take a, we can take a picture. So I think wait, shift control three. Um, wait, what is going on? I'm not seeing my screenshot. Just hold on a second. Maybe I'm doing it wrong. Um, blah, blah, blah. Um, so wait, I don't understand. I should be taking a screenshot, but I'm not hearing it. Uh, so let's see. Yeah, so let me check that I took it. Okay, so maybe somebody yeah. else should, should take it just to make sure because uh, I'm not really sure whether I did or not. Who can take a screenshot and then send send me the I don't know five. Munia, you know how to do it, or Atifa, you you know how to do it. I did it. I, I have it. I think I did it too. All right. Okay. Just uh, just send it to me so that I can upload it to the agenda. Uh, I right. did so, not. He did not inform us before because I did not shave today. <laughs> That's okay. That's fine. Yeah. Have this allowed. It's fine. Um. So, um, Atifa, send send me your PDF file. We're gonna upload it to the agenda page. And the session is also recorded, and we will also add the recording on the agenda page. Okay, um, okay, so, I will send it to you. Yeah. So. Um, then, uh, by all means, please, uh, you know, connect to our Twitter and uh, Instagram account. I think you young people, you know those things <laughs> a lot better than than some of us. And we want we want that forum to be to be really active and to so that all of you across Africa will know of each other and uh, the work that you are doing and it will be another opportunity for networking and and to support each other. All right. So um, any further comments or any other question? Okay. So very if nice, not, very nice presentation. Oh uh, yeah, Herman. Thanks a lot for your support and for being present all the time. Really appreciate it. Okay, Atifa, thanks again for this very nice presentation, very nice work and all the best to you. And uh, we'll be seeing you, uh, from you uh, uh, in the future. Thank you, um, thank you so much. Thank you for welcome. this opportunity. You're welcome. Okay, so um, if there are no other questions or comments, uh, we'll end the session today. And thanks uh, everybody for your participation. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.